Welcome back uh, to the Vantage Seminar, our fourth talk in the series of modular curves and Galois representations. And for this talk, we're happy to have Jeremy Rouse speaking on elatic images of Galois for elliptic curves over Q. And uh, Jeremy, is it all right if we record this talk? Yes. Oh, great. Well, please get started. So uh, thanks again for the organizers for the opportunity to speak. Um, and thank you also to Pete for giving an excellent first talk today. I really enjoyed that and appreciated it. Um, so my focus in this talk will be different. Um, as Pete had foreshadowed, I will be focusing on non-CM elliptic curves and I'll also be focusing on elliptic curves over Q. So before I continue, I wanted to say, um, that this talk is joint work with Drew Sutherland and David Zark Brown. We're both here. Our paper uh, with our results appeared on the archive 17 hours ago, so you can uh, go and look at it. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, the talk starts with the way basically every number theory talk starts with GQ, the absolute Galois group of Q bar over Q. This is a fundamental object of study in number theory. So if you have an elliptic curve over Q, then you let EN be uh, the set of points in E of Q bar that have order defining N. So as an abelian group, this is isomorphic to Z mod NZ squared. And of course, the absolute Galois group acts on everything. So if N is a positive integer, we have uh, the mod N Galois representation attached to E, which is a homomorphism from GQ to the automorphism group of EN, which is GL2 Z mod NZ. I'm going to abbreviate that as GL2 N for the duration of my talk. So we can consider some modifications of this. In particular, if we fix a prime L, then we can look at row EL to the infinity, the homomorphism from GQ to GL2 ZL, which is the inverse limit of GL2 L to the Ks. So this keeps track of how the absolute Galois group acts on all L power torsion points on the elliptic curve. Um, and we can even extend this further to the full um, adelic Gao representation, rho E from GQ to GL2 Z hat. And Maser's program B, which is stated in one of the two survey articles posted on the Vantage website, says given a number field K and a subgroup H of GL2 Z hat, Classify all elliptic curves E over K, whose associated Galois representation on torsion points maps Gal K bar over K into H. So this is Mazur's program B. And the focus of my talk is to try to say as much as we possibly can uh, in this situation where the number field is Q and where the subgroup is a subgroup of uh, prime power level. So first in the prime level case, if E over Q is an elliptic curve, L is an odd prime and row EL is not surjective, then the image of this mod L Gau representation has to be contained in a maximal subgroup of GL2L. And the options for such maximal subgroups are the Borel subgroups. Uh, the set of upper triangular matrices mod L is the largest Borel subgroup. They're normalizers of Carton subgroups. So Carton subgroups are isomorphic to either FL star cross FL star or FL squared star. The Carton subgroups have index two in their normalizer. Um, and there are exceptional subgroups. These are subgroups of GL2L whose image in PGL2 is isomorphic to A4, S4, or A5. So what's known about these possibilities? So in 1972, uh, Serre proved that if L greater than or equal to 17 is prime, then the image of rho EL cannot be contained in an exceptional subgroup, uh, one with projective image A4, S4, or A5. Um, so Mazur, um, in the classification of uh, Rational isogenies of prime degree, the largest prime L for which rho EL is contained in a Borel subgroup is 163. 
That's what could happen for any elliptic curve over Q. But if you restrict to elliptic curves that do not have complex multiplication, the largest prime L that can occur is 37. And then Bilou Parent and Nip Rebeledo in 2013 if have a result about the normalizer of the split carton. If L is greater than or equal to 17, the image cannot be contained in the normalizer of a split carton. So sometimes the most interesting things are what results are not theorems. And the one remaining case is what can you say about the normalizer of the non-split carton? If you can rule out the possibility of the image of rho EL being contained in a non-split carton, then you can prove that rho EL is surjective, uh, which is definitely the most important unsolved problem about gal representations attached to elliptic curves, arguably at least. Uh, so why should you be interested in Gower presentations? I'd like to give you uh, some reasons why uh, they're important results that you can prove if you understand them well. So the first is Fermat's last theorem. Suppose that you have an odd prime L and a solution to the Fermat equation. This is the Fry curve associated with that. So this elliptic curve has full two torsion. Um, and level lowering gives that if the mod L Gower presentation attached to E is irreducible, then it has to arise from a modular form of weight two and level two. And there aren't such. And this contradiction proves from Ma's last theorem. Of course, there are a lot of details that go into this. So um, in particular, I'm using the, I'm thinking about this using the full strength of Sarah's conjecture and proving Sarah's conjecture is very, very difficult. This is not the only application, although it may be the best known one. So uh, another application is proving that 0, 1, 8, and 144 are the only perfect powers in the Fibonacci sequence. That result used a number of techniques, linear forms and logarithms, but it also used Fry elliptic curves like this. So solving generalized Fermi equations, um, like Poon and Schaefer and Stoll's result about x squared plus y cubed equals e to the seventh, finding all of the co-prime integer solutions to that. Um, and this is now the modular method a technique for handling certain sorts of Diophantine equations. Another application that I'm quite fond of is the inverse Galois problem. So if you pick an odd prime P and an integer capital N uh, in the set two, three, or seven, which is a quadratic non-residue mod P, and you let K be this quadratic field, which is a subfield of the P cyclotomic field, and sigma be the non-trivial automorphism of K. Suppose that you have an elliptic curve uh, defined over K that has a cyclic anisogeny also defined over K uh, between E and E sigma. So this elliptic curve E would be a Q curve, a curve which is isogenous to its Galois conjugate. I want to impose this condition that lambda of En is the kernel of lambda uh, with sigma applied to it. So then a result of Xi says that if you assume this notation, then the P torsion field of E is actually Galois over Q. And if the mod P Galois representation attached to E uh, has image as large as possible, namely all the elements in GL2P whose determinant is a square, then PSL2 of FP is a quotient of this Galois group. And in particular, PSL2 of FP uh, arises as a Galois extension of Q. And in these cases where n equals two, three, and seven, the set of elliptic curves that satisfy this second condition uh, is parameterized by a modular curve, which is isomorphic to P1. And because of this, you can actually construct an extension of Q join T that has Galois group PSL2 of FP. And there are a few refinements of this method. In particular, uh, there's some tricks that you can use to make n equals five work also, and Pete Clark worked on uh, some extensions of this to larger values of n. So other applications uh, are about just studying the torsion fields of elliptic curves. So properties of the pairing imply that the nth cyclotomic field is contained in the n torsion of an elliptic curve over Q. And you can ask, when can these two fields be equal? So Gonzalez Jimenez and Alvaro Lozano Roberto proved in a paper of 2016 that if E over Q is an elliptic curve um, and these two fields are equal, then N is less than or equal to five. 
And in fact, uh, you can have equality for each n less than or equal to five. Um, another result along these lines, if E is an elliptic curve and Q join EN and Q join EM are both abelian extensions that are equal and M and N are different, then M and N must come from this set. The question about when q join en and q join em can be equal without the restriction about the extension being abelian is currently open. And the fourth application, um, here's an application connected to arithmetic dynamics. If you choose an elliptic curve over q and a point alpha in e of q that has infinite order, and then you fix a prime number l, what is the density of primes P for which the, the reduction of that point mod P has order coprime to L? This is a question I've worked on a fair amount. This order is determined by the image of a slightly larger Galois representation that keeps track of the action of Galois on the L power torsion points, but also the action of Galois on the L to the K preimages of alpha. And based on knowing what we can about the image of this Galois representation, we can prove some things about this. In particular, if E does not have CM, L equals two, and alpha plus T is not twice a point in E of Q for any rational torsion point, then the density of odd order reductions um, has some absolute minimum that it can be. Okay. So these are some reasons you might be interested in un an understanding the images of these Galois representations. How can we study those? So this came up in Pete's talk. Suppose that H is a subgroup of GL2N that contains minus the identity. Then there is a modular curve, Y sub H, that parameterizes elliptic curves with an H-level structure. What is an H-level structure? An H-level structure on an elliptic curve over an algebraically closed field is an equivalence class iota, where iota is an isomorphism from en to z mod nz squared. We're thinking of GL2n as automorphisms of z mod nz squared. And so we can say that two uh, iotas are equivalent if they differ by composition by some element of uh, this group H that we're choosing. So the curve y sub h can be compactified by adding cusps. So the set of cusps is x sub h infinity. And when you do that, you get a smooth projective curve x sub h. And these are modular curves. So here are some properties of modular curves. The curve x sub h is geometrically connected if and only if the determinant map is surjective. Most of the cases I'll talk about in this talk have that condition being true. If you take an elliptic curve over a field K with J invariant not equal to 0, 17, 28, then there's an isomorphism iota uh, with the property that this pair is in Y sub H of K if and only if the image of row EN is contained in a subgroup, which is conjugate to H. So these modular curves are parametrizing elliptic curves over K where the image of the mod n Galois representation is contained in H, apart from these weirdnesses at 0 and 17, 28. Okay. Also, if H and H prime are two subgroups, one contained in the other, there's an induced morphism on the modular curves, X of H to X of H prime, that sends H level structures to H prime level structures. So you have these natural maps between modular curves that come from subgroup inclusions. Um, one of the things that's nice is that the curve X of H has good reduction at primes not dividing the level. This is one thing that makes these curves special. Another thing is that the Jacobian of X of H uh, has an action on it of HECA operators. You think of HECA operators as being associated with modular forms and you can associate modular forms to X of H. So this means that the, uh, the endomorphism ring of the Jacobian is larger than it might be otherwise. Um, so one of the results in the paper that was posted on Archive 17 hours ago that's joint with John Voigt is that in this situation where the determinant is surjective, every simple factor of the Jacobian of J sub H is isogenous 
to uh, a modular abelian variety uh, for some weight to new form F uh, for gamma zero of N squared intersect gamma one of N. We do have a result that applies when the determinant is not surjective, but this is a special case. So we can say that when we look at the simple factors of the Jacobians of these arbitrary modular curves, we're not really getting anything different than what we already got for X one of N. So to talk about these various arbitrary subgroups of GL2Z hat, uh, we have a labeling system. We define the level of H to be the smallest positive integer N, so that H contains all matrices congruent to the identity mod N. And then we assign a label that consists of four numbers, N, I, G, and little n. So I is the index of H in GL2Z hat. G is the genus of the modular curve X of H. And N is a tie break uh, that takes into account a number of things that I won't describe in more detail here. Another thing that I'll do for the rest of this talk is that we identify the group H, which is a subgroup of GL2Z hat with its image in GL2N. So another thing to be reminded of uh, from Faulting's theorem, X sub H of Q is finite if the genus is greater than or equal to two. I'll give you some examples of these subgroup labels in a bit. Um, so another thing to talk about are the non-split Carton subgroups. So I'll need these not just for prime level, but for prime power level. Suppose that L greater than two is a prime and epsilon is a quadratic non-residue modulo L. The ring Z mod L to the NZ adjoin the square root of epsilon is a free Z mod L to the NZ module of rank two. And this gives an embedding of the unit group of that ring into GL2 L to the N. So the image of this embedding is a non-split Carton subgroup. And we let N sub NS of L to the N be its normalizer. Concretely, you could write this as the matrices A, B epsilon, plus or minus B, plus or minus A, where A and B are in Z mod L to the N Z, and A and B are not both uh, zero mod L to the N. And we let X non-split plus of L to the N be the corresponding modular curve. So a theorem of Chen uh, says that up to isogeny, the Jacobian of this modular curve is uh, the product J sub F, where the F runs over all new forms of weight two for gamma zero of L to the two R uh, with trivial character and where the sign of the functional equation of F is equal to minus one. So in particular, um, all of the isogeny factors of the Jacobian should have positive rank. And that means that these modular curves should be difficult to handle. The technique that Maser used um, in studying rational isogenies of prime degree to use uh, factors of the Jacobian of X zero of N that have rank zero will not work on these curves. So we say that a subgroup of level N is arithmetically maximal if the determinant is surjective, if H contains an element which is conjugate to one zero zero minus one or one one zero minus one in GL two N, and X H of Q is finite, but X sub K of Q is infinite for every K that properly contains H. So these conditions are necessary for there to possibly be elliptic curves over Q whose adelic image is equal to H. So properties of the Bay pairing guarantee that um, the determinant map of the image, of, the adelic image of Galois has to be Z hat star. This condition is necessary for there to be non-cuspidal real points on the modular curve X of H. This third property uh, we use to isolate finitely many subgroups of a given prime power level. So our focus is on understanding these X sub H of Qs. So here's an example of one such. So 
the normalized of the non-split carton mod five is an index 10 maximal subgroup of GL25. It has label five, 10, zero, one. So five indicates the level, 10 indicates the index, zero indicates the genus, and one is the tie break. The corresponding modular curve has genus zero and is isomorphic to P1. So if you have an elliptic curve whose J invariant is not equal to 0, 17, 28, then the mod five image of Galois is contained in a subgroup conjugate to the normalizer of the non-split Carton mod five, if and only if the J invariant has this form. So because this is a degree 10 cover of the J line, this rational function is a rational function of degree 10. There is an index five subgroup of this normalized of the non-split carton. It's a subgroup of level 25. This has label 25, 50, two, one. So level 25, index 50, genus two. This is a model of the corresponding modular curve. I chose a model that was simple. This model has bad reduction at two, but you can make a change of variables, so-called uncompleting the square, to find a model which has bad reduction only at five. <clears throat> the Jacobian uh, J sub H is isogenous to J sub F, where F is the new form with this LMFDB label. And with that information, you can conclude that J sub H over Q has analytic rank two. And so if you believe the Birch and Swinnerton Dyer conjecture, then the Jacobian of X sub H should have rank two. And that means that using uh, Chabot is not an effective way to find all the rational points on this curve. There are two rational points on this curve, uh, the two points that are at infinity and their images on the J line are J equals zero and J equals this integer. In fact, if you take an elliptic curve over Q with this J invariant, then the five attic image of Galois is an index 50 subgroup of GL2Z5. In particular, it is H. And uh, Jennifer Balakrishna, Natan Dogra, Stefan Mueller, Jan Teutman, and Jan Vonk prove that the only rational points on this X sub H are the two points at infinity. Um, and with their result, um, we can know that. There's only one J invariant of an elliptic curve that can have this five attic image of Galois. So here's what we can say about the L attic images of Galois. So for L equals two, this is something that I worked out with David Zwerg Brown. If you have a non CM elliptic curve, you let H be the two attic image, and then you take that subgroup and you throw in minus the identity, then either the index of H hat in GL2Z2 is less than or equal to 48, or J of E is one of these J invariants. There are eight of these J invariants. For the first six of these J invariants, the uh, two-etic image of Galois has index 96, and for the last two, the two-etic image of Galois has index 64. So for L equals three, if you take a non elliptic curve and you let H be its three-etic image, then either the corresponding modular curve is a genus zero modular curve with infinitely many rational points, or H is contained in the normalizer of the non-split Carton mod 27. So we cannot completely classify the three-etic images of Galois for elliptic curves over Q because we cannot provably determine all of the rational points on this curve X non-split plus of 27. So in the first case, when XH has genus zero, the index can be as large as 72 and the level can be as large as 27. And we also have a complete classification of the three-etic image for non-CM elliptic curves with a cyclic three isogeny. You can't have a cyclic three isogeny and also have your three-etic image of Galois be contained in the non-split Carton mod 27. So here's a diagram that illustrates 
what the possible theoretic images can be. It's a little bit small. <clears throat> so in this diagram, <clears throat> where it appears in this table is determined by its index. So index one, index three, index four, six, eight, nine, et cetera. The color of a node indicates the level. So we have green for level one, red for level three, yellow or gold for level nine, and then orange for level 27. There's a slight difference in shade that indicates whether the subgroup contains minus the identity or doesn't contain minus the identity. The last thing to say is that there's this one node here which is colored blue. <clears throat> that corresponds to the normalizer of the non-split Cartan mod nine. The corresponding modular curve is isomorphic to P1. So they're infinitely elliptic curves that have that uh, mod nine image. But we cannot rule out now the possibility that there might be an elliptic curve over Q that has image a proper subgroup of that. There are a number of uh, modular curves <clears throat> that are familiar to people that show up in this list. So this 3.3.0.1 modular curve is the non-split Cartan mod three. This modular curve is X zero of three. This modular curve 3.12.0.1 is the modular curve X zero three comma three. This is something Pete Clark alluded to in his talk. This 92101 modular curve is X zero of nine. Interestingly, you do get uh, a, a threadic image of index 72 for an elliptic curve that has a rational nine torsion point. I think that's the modular curve 9.72.0.5. All right, I could talk more about this, but I think I'll talk next about what we can say for the larger primes. So for the five attic image of Galois, either uh, X sub H is a genus zero modular curve with infinitely rational points, or the J invariant is one of these two numbers, or the five attic image is contained in the normalizer of the non-split Cartan mod 25. So I've already talked about this first J invariant, two to the four, three squared, five to the seven, two, 23 cubed. The second J invariant listed comes from an exceptional point on a genus two modular curve um, where the five attic image uh, has index 75. There's a result of Greenberg that says that if you look at the five attic image of Galois for elliptic curves that have a cyclic five isogeny, the index cannot be a multiple of 25. So it's sort of interesting that you can have elliptic curves without a cyclic five isogeny, where the five attic image of Galois can have index a multiple of 25. For L equals seven, there's some more possibilities that can occur. Um, so XH is a genus zero modular curve with infinitely rational points, or the J invariant is this number, or H is contained in a level 49 subgroup with one of these two labels, or H is contained in the normalizer of the non-split Cartan mod 49. I have to say that our main contribution in the L equals seven case is mostly to the bookkeeping that I believe all of the modular curves that arise um, and for which they needed to be ruled out as images were done by other people. So this J invariant here um, arises from elliptic curve E over Q that does not have a cyclic seven isogeny defined over Q, but has a cyclic seven isogeny over FP for all primes P of good reduction. So Drew Sutherland wrote a paper about this uh, phenomenon. For 11 attic images of Galois, if we let H be the 11 attic image and it's not all of GL2Z11, then either the image is equal to the normalizer of the non-split Cartan mod 11, or the J invariant is one of these two numbers, or 
the image is contained in the normalizer of the non-split Carton mod 121. So a few things to say about this. So, and this, this is the first situation where you don't have any genus zero modular curves. The modular curve for the normalizer of the non-split Carton mod 11 is an elliptic curve that has rank one. So the first case happens infinitely often. There are infinitely rational points on that curve. That means infinitely many J invariants of elliptic curves over Q whose mod 11 image is contained in that normalizer. These two J invariants arise from rational points on X zero of 11. X zero of 11 is an elliptic curve with more del group Z mod five Z. Of those five points, two of them are cusps. One of them is a CM point, and then the remaining two are these two J invariants. In the last case, we can show that the J invariant of E is pretty large. It has height um, larger than about 10 to the 10 to the 200. And we can do that using the Mordell Vasive. I'll mention finally L equals 13. So in this situation, we also didn't do any of the work. Um, the classification of 13 attic images of Galois is known. If the 13 attic image of Galois is not all of GL2Z13, then it must be this subgroup with label 13.91.3.2, which is the mod 13 S4 curve. And that has three non-CM rational points on it. So, so Bonwade and Cremona were the people who wrote down the equation for this curve. Um, Jennifer Balakrishnan and her collaborators were the people who handled provably finding all the rational points on that modular curve, as well as the cursed curve, the non-split Carton mod 13, and also the, the split Carton mod 13. And Kenku uh, played a role in handling the case of X0 of 169, and David Zywina handled a, a couple more uh, level 13 modular curves. So the method we go about for determining the elliptic image of Galois is to enumerate arithmetically mass maximal subgroups of GL2ZL. For most of these H, we compute a model for X sub H. Certainly all of the cases where we need to compute a model, we do. And then we find all the rational points on the modular curve X sub H. So one of the techniques that we use uh, is an algorithm to count points quickly on modular curves over F sub Q without having an equation for it. <clears throat> so in 2015, David Zywina wrote a paper where he gave a method for doing this. So, so we produce a refinement of that method that counts points on modular curves over FQ. Q here could be a prime or it could be a prime power. It runs in time big O tilde of Q one half. And it doesn't require computing Hilbert class polynomials. So Drew Sutherland was uh, the main person who worked on that aspect of it. And this method allows us to compute the numerator of the zeta function for x of h, even if the genus of x of h is moderate. And it connects with um, determining the decomposition of the Jacobian of x of h. So if we have a subgroup of GL2N, the simple isogeny factors of J sub H have the form J sub F, where F is a new form for gamma one of N squared and the Dirichlet character chi has a conductor that divides N. So combining that with a fast point counting code with the tabulation of new forms allows us to compute the decomposition of the Jacobian. We do that um, for We've computed the analytic rank in particular of J sub H for every arithmetically maximal H whose level is a power of a prime and the prime is less than or equal to 37. And this is sometimes useful uh, when we find the rational points on X of H. Here is an example. So let's let X be this genus three curve. This is one of the three attic modular curves that has label 273631. There's an automorphism of this curve that interchanges X and Y. You can see that just from looking at the equation. 
the quotient of this modular curve by this involution is a rank one elliptic curve. And because we know how to compose, decompose the Jacobians of modular curves, we can say that the Jacobian is isogenous to E cross A, where A is an abelian surface that has rank zero. In particular, we can define a map from X of Q to J sub X by taking P to the point P minus iota of P. And because uh, the abelian surface has rank zero, this point P minus iota P lands in the torsion subgroup of the Jacobian. So then we can go about computing the torsion subgroup of the Jacobian of X, and we can take pre-images of points in the Jacobian and find all the points on the curve X that map to them. And in that way, we can determine the set X of Q. This is a technique that works in several cases. We also do this for a genus six three-edit curve. It's a little bit more complicated than what I've said here. Um, and if you want more details, you can look at the paper. One of the things that we do along the way is we have a method for computing canonical models of higher genus modular curves by finding a base for the, basis for the space of holomorphic differentials on X and H. So if you have a non hyperelliptic curve of genus at least three, the canonical ring is generated in degree one. And so if you can find a basis for the space of holomorphic differentials, that is holomorphic one forms, then from that you can get uh, the other graded pieces of this ring. Um, and we find a map from X sub H to the J line by representing E4 and E6 as ratios of the elements in the canonical ring, and then using a formula that relates J to E4 and E6. And this is more efficient than trying to find J itself. Um, in particular, <clears throat> we can show that E4 is a ratio of an element of weight K and a element of, element of weight K minus four in that canonical ring, as long as K is larger than or equal to this quantity. So here G is the genus of the modular curve, E2, E3, and E infinity are the number of elliptic points of order two, order three, and the number of cusps. We have a similar formula uh, for E6. We use this to compute the canonical models for X non-split plus of 27, uh, canonical model for this uh, genus 43 modular curve. This is a little bit uh, intense to do. The canonical model of a genus 43 curve lives in P42. We also do this for the non-split carton mod 25 and another uh, five attic subgroup of genus 36. And we can use those canonical models to show that there are no points on these two modular curves over Q3 and over Q5, respectively. There may be a way to study carefully the properties of three edit Gower presentations over Q3 uh, to show that these modular curves would not have any uh, Q points, but we have not pursued that method. So I wanted to spend the final minutes of my talk just talking about some of the cases that we were not able to handle. So the non-split Carton mod 27 has genus 12. It has eight rational CM points. We have a canonical model for it. The Jacobian factors is a product of two simple abelian varieties of dimension six, each with analytic rank six. We did try some things with this curve. Um, one of the things that we noticed is that there's a genus three modular curve corresponding to a subgroup H where the determinant is not surjective that's defined over Q adjoins zeta three. And the map from X non-split plus of 27 to X non-split plus of nine factors through this genus three curve. The, the, the map here and the map here are only defined over Q adjoins zeta three. Now, we have a canonical model for X sub H, and it has at least 13 points defined on it over Q adjoins zeta three, including uh, a non-CM point. Um, we were able to find a divisor on this curve whose image in the Jacobian has order three. Um, and using that divisor, we were able to construct an atoll cover of X sub H. That will be a curve of genus seven. 
Um, and it turns out that this curve together with its nine twists, each of those curves maps to an elliptic curve defined over Q adjoined zeta three. This is a situation where we might try to do elliptic curve Chabot T. However, for eight of the twists, the elliptic curve has rank one, but for the final twist, the elliptic curve has rank two. And doing elliptic curve Chabot T over a quadratic field when you have an elliptic curve of rank two is not going to work. So that's one reason that we were not successful for this curve. Another case that we can't handle is X non split plus of 25. This curve has genus 14. It has eight rational CM points. The Jacobian factors is a product of three abelian surfaces and one dimension eight abelian variety. If there were a map from X non split plus of 25 to a genus two curve, C, we could probably use that to provably find the rational points on X non split plus of 25. The genus two curves whose Jacobians are factors of this abelian variety are curves that um, the quadratic Chabot T technique probably could handle. In fact, two of those genus two curves are the genus two curves that were mentioned in the five attic result with labels 25, 50, 2, 1, and 25, 75, 2, 1. There are some computations that I've done that lead me to think that there is not such a map to a genus two curve. And so this technique is probably unlikely to work. Another case we can't handle. So the level 49 subgroup with label 4914791. This curve is a degree seven cover of the non-split carton mod seven, which is isomorphic to P1. We have a simple plane model for the curve of degree seven. If we point search on it, we can find a rational point with j equals zero. The Jacobian is irreducible and the analytic rank is nine. Torsion subgroup is trivial. The curve doesn't have any automorphisms defined over Q. And so it doesn't seem like there's a natural thing to try to find the rational points. A similar thing happens with another curve uh, that shows up in the seven attic case. So, this is a degree seven cover of the split carton, normalizer of the split carton mod set. Again, we have a plane model of degree seven. There's a single point with J invariant zero on this curve that we have found. The Jacobian has analytic rank nine and it factors as the product of two abelian varieties of dimension three and six. Again, the torsion subgroup is trivial and there are no automorphisms defined over Q. And the final case I want to mention, even though it doesn't really follow, <clears throat> fall into the scope of what we were looking at, is the non-split Carton mod 17. So Pietro Mercuri and Rene Scove computed a canonical model for this genus six curve. By Chen's result, if you have a new form of level 17 squared that has sign equal to negative one, then the corresponding abelian variety is a factor of the Jacobian. In particular, there is an elliptic curve with conductor 289 and a root number minus one. And there's a map from X non-split plus of 17 to this elliptic curve. The degree of the map from X not, X not of 289 to E is 72. And one thing that I wanted to know if I was trying to write down this map from X non-split plus of 17 to E was what was the degree from X non-split plus of 17? So John Cremona has a paper um, in MathComp from 1995 with a technique for computing the modular degree of an elliptic curve that works really for an arbitrary subgroup. You don't have to do it for X zero of N. And using that paper, we compute that the degree of the map is nine. It seems interesting to me that the degree of the map from X non-split plus of 17 to E is much lower than the degree of the map from X naught of 289 to E. I wonder if this happens in general for elliptic curves with conductor P squared and root number minus one. So using this, we can guess the induced map on differentials uh, from the differential of E to the differentials of X. And using this, we can produce the morphism from X to E. 
So we have the degree nine map from exon split plus of 17 to E. The more del group this, of this elliptic curve is Z cross C mod four Z. And we can use the more del to show that a rational point on X, its image on E has to have the form KP plus R times T where the numbers K and R are either in this set or the absolute value of K is larger than 6.9 times 10 to the 40. And the only points on X corresponding to those are CM points. And this gives fairly strong evidence that the only rational points on the non-split Carton mod 17 curve are CM points. It would be very surprising if you had some extraordinarily large K with the property that there was a rational point on the curve of the form KP plus RT. There maybe are still some things that one could try. So we can use the non-trivial torsion subgroup of the Jacobian of X to construct an atoll double cover Y. This curve Y will have genus 11. The five dimensional new piece of the Jacobian of Y is irreducible. So we don't have new maps to lower genus curves, um, but the map from Y to E ensures that the Jacobian of Y has a non-rational two torsion point. And I wonder if it's possible to use this rational two torsion point to do a descent on the Jacobian of Y to see if the rank increases if the rank of the Jacobian of Y is larger than the rank of X. If it is, then it might be hard to make progress. But if it's not, maybe there's something like this uh, P minus iota P trick that I mentioned earlier that could be applied. So that's all I wanted to talk about. Um, so as a summary, we develop new methods to count points on these modular curves to compute their decomposition. We provably find the rational points on X of H for all L power arithmetic max, arithmetically maximal subgroups with the following exceptions. So we have these non-split cartons and then we have these uh, other modular curves of level 49. Thank you very much. Fantastic, let's see, um, anyone have any questions? You can raise your hand or you can just, uh, oh yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, so for these issues when the group is contained in the normalizer of a, let's say level P squared, how often does that happen? Um, like how often do those groups arise or how often are there elliptic curves over Q that have that image of Gawa? How often do those groups arise? I mean, you could say that they arise for every prime but somehow the, the issue that occurs is that we only have to worry about these groups if the prime level non-split Carton modular curve has genus zero or one. And that happens for two, three, five, seven, and 11, but never again. Yeah, are there other, some other questions? Well, I was kind of curious, you had some examples back a ways, I think, where um, your curves failed to have piatic points, maybe like over Q3 and, and Q5. So that, that interests me from long ago. Um, do, do you have any, um, I mean, first of all, like, I, I think I probably asked Drew, Drew about this and I just sort of forget. So um, it, I, I guess it, 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 do you know, you know for which of these families of curves you have rational cusps and for which of these you don't. And so um, can you remind me like which families um, you might you might fail to have piatic points? I mean, so failing to have piatic point, if you have an elliptic curve, if you have a curve that has no rational points at all, then it could possibly fail to have piatic points. Um, no, I, I, I agree. <laughs> none of these non-split Carton curves have rational cusps. Right, so the entire family of non-split cartons that you're looking at, right? Okay. 
Um, got it. Whereas for most of the other modular curves, you do have rational tests, I guess, right? Or Many, but not, I mean, these other level 49 subgroups also don't have rational cusps. I see, okay. Um, so the next question is, um, so you, do I understand, you kind of proved computationally that, that they failed to have pionic points? Um, That's correct. How did you do that? Um, so for the genus 43 curve, we have a canonical model of it. Mm -hmm. um, we can fairly easily find the mod three points. Mm -hmm. And what we can do then is we can take a mod three point and then we construct like a system of equations mod nine that would correspond to that mod three point lifting to a mod nine point. So the I most guess, efficient I mean, way to do this is to specify a little bit more than that, like pick values for the first five variables in this system of equations with 43 variables. And then so, do a Grubner basis computation over Z to see if there are any, basically to see if there are any mod nine lifts of that mod three point. But so one of them, well, there was one, maybe you could find the example if, you, if, it's, if it's no trouble. So you had one curve which failed to have pianic points modulo a prime of good reduction, or is that not the case? So this also, so these, let's see. And maybe while Jeremy's finding that, I'll just mention there's two very different techniques. In the good reduction case, we just count points at all the primes that are small enough where it could possibly have no points. Mm -hmm. And we list in the appendix every case where we were able to use that to show that there's a local obstruction. But okay, that, I guess the, I, think, I think that's what I was getting around to asking about, yeah. And mm -hmm. if you don't have good reduction, okay, well, thank you. So uh, these are both instances where the curve has no points at a prime of bad reduction. Yeah, and that case is harder. That's what Jeremy- oh, Sure, is. sure. So if it has bad reduction, then, you know, from a certain perspective, you might want to try to compute the, um, you know the special fiber of a of a regular model over ZP, and then you know from that, from looking at that, you could if you then you'll you'll have you'll have QP points if and only if you have smooth FP points on the special fiber. I was reminded it's bizarrely this um this paper of mine on uh, PSL two FP like that that I think that I think this is a paper where it um it comes up where I look at Atkin Laner twists of um x naught of p and i show that they don't have piatic points by by looking at the special fiber but um i guess it's probably these these exotic curves it's not it's not at all clear um you know if you, it's you don't happen to know what the what the um what the special fiber of a regular model would look like. that's correct and in fact we tried to do what you're saying and it uh -huh. didn't work because okay. the models <laughs> good, that we have, good answer. <laughs> they have a reduction that's two dimensional, the, mm -hmm. the canonical models that we have. And if you have a canonical model of a genus 43 curve, magma is not able to compute the flat reduction of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just like such a ridiculous Grubner basis computation that it will never succeed. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's very interesting. Thank you. Let's see, other questions? Well, let's thank um, Jeremy and also Pete again. Mm.